This is a great day, a day that the Lord has made. He woke us all up, yes, and he sent us on our way to give him all the honor, the glory, and the praise. Thank you. Would y'all, <laughs> uh, would y'all assist me in singing this song with me? This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made, I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made, I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day. Sing unto the Lord a new song. A new song. And it's praise in the congregation yes, of the saints. Hallelujah. I got a song in my spirit this morning also. Mm -hmm. And first of all, give an honor to God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Yes. Elder Breedy, yes. the Breedies, and uh, all the elders in the house, all the ministers of the fivefold ministry, all the saints of God, my sisters and brothers in Christ in all offices, and the church don't have no friends. We used to, in the old days, say Christian members and friends, but the church ain't got no friends. You either in or you out. Amen, amen. Can I uh, take this off again? I worship you, O oh God. My heart wants to convey this love I have for you these simple words I pray I pray that everything that is within me let it bless your holy name. I worship you, oh God. That's all I long to say. I worship you, oh My heart wants to convey this love I have for you, 
These simple words I pray, I pray, let everything that is within me, let it bless your holy name. I worship you, oh God, that's all I your grace and your glory but according as you said in your word father we uh, come before your father confessing our sins you said that if we confess our sins that you are faithful and just to forgive us of all of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness and we ask your father by the unctioning of the holy spirit that you would highlight the things that we need to confess before you that there be no hindrance to the flow of your spirit this morning in this sanctuary. We ask, Father, that you would forgive us for every unrighteous act and allow us to be vessels fit for your use and for your service. Create right now within us a clean heart and renew within us a right spirit that we may be able to go forward in the beauty of holiness, just lifting up your holy name. For we know that if you be lifted up, that you will draw all men unto you, Father. We give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you all the praise for the things that you will accomplish in this setting. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. If you have your Bibles with you this morning, I want to preach from a couple of passages of Scripture. If you would turn with me to the book of Exodus, the 19th chapter. Exodus, the 19th chapter. We stand for the reading of the word. And when you have it, say, I have God's word. Also, from the book of Psalms, that would be Psalm 76, the 76th Psalm. Put a marker there, we're going to read from the 19th chapter of Exodus first. Have it, say, I have God's word. Need a little more time, say, wait a minute. All right, from this 19th chapter of the book of Exodus, beginning with the first verse, it says, In the third month, when the children of Israel were gone forth, out of the land of Egypt, the same day came they unto the wilderness of Sinai. For they were departed from Rephidim, and were come to the desert of Sinai, and had pitched in the wilderness, and there Israel camped before the mount. And Moses went up unto God, and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, you have seen 
what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bare you on eagles' wings mm -hmm. and brought you unto myself. Now therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. From the 76th Psalm, beginning with the first verse, and it says, In Judah is God known. His name is great in Israel, and Salem also is his tabernacle and his dwelling place in Zion. And what the Lord has given me to talk to you about today is around the subject, a kingdom of priests. A kingdom of priests. Now, we as members of the body of Christ today, we know that to everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under the heaven. And because we have the full Bible, we understand what God's purpose is. We Last time I was here, we talked about God's purpose, which is located in the 14th chapter of the book of Isaiah. And it says, the Lord of hosts had sworn, saying, as surely as I have thought, so shall it come to pass. And I have purposed, so shall it stand, that I will break the Assyrian in my land and upon my mountain, tread him underfoot. Then shall his yoke depart from off of them and his burden from off their shoulder. This is the purpose that is purposed in the whole earth. And this is the hand that is stretched out upon all the nations. The Lord of hosts had purpose. And who shall disannul it? And his hand is stretched out. And who shall turn it back? Nobody can turn back the hand of the Lord. And his purpose from the beginning, he had to start with somebody. Now the children of Israel had came out of the land of Egypt after being in bondage for some 400 years. In God's purpose, he never put his children in the way of danger. It is always for some purpose of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So they was in, 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 in bondage for some 400 years. Now I can look into the book of Jeremiah and in the book of Jeremiah, God had told Jeremiah to send a letter to the elders after they had been uh, helped, been captured by the king Nebuchadnezzar. God set Nebuchadnezzar up in that situation because he had Jeremiah to tell them that to the elders, he says, to whom all I have caused to be carried away captive from Jerusalem into Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar didn't defeat the children of Israel. He had a purpose for them to be there. And in this purpose, he told them that they was there to increase and not decrease in the land. He told them that Pray for the peace of the city, for in the peace thereof shall you have peace. Now the children of Israel, God starts somewhere. God was, he had told Moses to tell Pharaoh in the ninth chapter of the book of Exodus, he says, for this cause have I raised thee up, for to show in thee my power, and that my name may be declared in all the earth. Mm -hmm. So his purpose for the children of Israel to be there, he had already made a covenant with Abraham. And with Abraham, he told him that his seed would be as the sand of the sea. 
Amen. So now, uh, after 400 years, uh, in the dictionary, layman's Bible encyclopedia, it would say that there was four to six million people that had been, that was in the desert with the children of Israel. After 400 years, 20 years is considered to be a generation. So after 400 years, it was said that there was four to six million people in the desert. So God told Moses that the children of Israel, his goal was for the children of Israel to be a kingdom of priests. Amen. Now, a covenant he told Moses, he says, if they would keep his covenant and do all that he speak, then they would be a, a peculiar treasure unto himself. To every blessing that we receive, there is a condition that we may, must make. A covenant is an unbreakable agreement. It's an unbreakable agreement between God and his people. Now his goal was for the children of Israel to be a kingdom of priests. Now we see in our text scriptures in the 76th Psalm, it says, In Judah, God is known. His name is great in Israel, and Salem also is his tabernacle, and his dwelling place is in Mount Zion. Even though he's known in Judah, his name is great in Salem, and in Salem was the first mention of the priest Melchizedek, who was considered the high priest, and he was considered king of Salem, and the high priest of the Most High God is the first mention of the priests in the Bible. He paid, Abraham paid tithes to Melchizedek as the high priest. Now, God, he told Moses in Numbers, the 14th chapter, no, the 8th chapter of the book of Numbers, he told Moses to bring the Levites to the tabernacle of the congregation, and he said, to have all the children of Israel to lay their hands on the Levites, and they would the Levites would uh, be anointed to do the service of the Lord. Amen. He was to do, they were to do the service of the Lord. Now the Levites they operated in the tabernacle, which had three compartments. There was the outer court, there was the holy place. And there was the Holy of Holies, where God dwelt. In the outer court, the Levites took the sacrifices of the people, and they prayed a fillet according to the orders of God and offered up the sacrifices unto God. It was a, In the natural, it was a pattern of how David described his approach unto God. He says, I will enter into his gates with thanksgiving and come into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Now God had chosen the Aaronic priesthood, which was Aaron and his sons to operate in the holy place. And in the holy place, it was an operation 24-7. They were burning incense before the Holy of Holies. There was a curtain in between the uh, holy place and the Holy of Holies. And the high priest was allowed into the holy place once a year on the Day of Atonement to sprinkle blood on the mercy seat for an atonement of the people. Now, I approach into well, let me back up. The tabernacle, when God's presence was in the Holy of Holies, that was the cloud of glory that led the children of Israel, uh, cloud by day, 
and a pillar of fire by night. Amen. And when the cloud moved, the priest had to, had to pack up the tabernacle. It was a portable tent. And they had to uh, pack up the tabernacle and move with the cloud. You can't pitch your tent in a desert church era because God's kingdom is an advancing kingdom. It ain't staying still for nobody. Amen. Uh, they, uh, I, 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 I remember the old folks saying, uh, uh, give me that good old time religion. Uh, uh, to everything, there is a season and a time for every purpose under the heaven. So uh, don't, don't give me no old time religion. I don't want to, I don't want to be left behind. Leave my Tip, camped in the desert. Amen. So now God had to start somewhere in order to accomplish his purpose, which was to be a kingdom of priests. And so he started with the Levites, in which the Levites did the service of the Lord. In the tabernacle, they did the service of the Lord. Of the Lord, but his goal was for the whole congregation to be a kingdom of priests. Yes. So he had to teach the people when they saw what was going on in the tabernacle how a priest was to operate and how they were to adopt what the priest did. Mm -hmm. The priest were to do the service of the Lord. Amen. 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 So now, we today, we operate in the priesthood. Because when Jesus was crucified, the curtain came down. And we didn't need the priest to do an atonement for us anymore. That's what the, 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 uh, the Catholic, the Roman Catholic religion is still based on the operation of the priest where Caesar incorporated some of the laws and uh, the approach of the Romans and combined it with Christianity to try to make a religion. But a, relig a religion is just that. It's just a religion. But the kingdom of God is a 24-7 lifestyle. Amen. The priest is to operate 24-7 doing the service of the Lord. When we, when we, when we come into what we call the sanctuary, he told, he told the children of Israel in Exodus, the 25th chapter, I think it's the 8th verse, he says, And let them make me a sanctuary, that I may dwell among them. Now the sanctuary, according to the layman's Bible encyclopedia, is a consecrated place. It's a sacred spot. It's the most sacred part of any Christian edifice. It's a building dedicated to the worship of God, also a sacred asylum, a place of refuge, and the place of God's rest. Amen. We here today, we in the sanctuary of the Most High God. It's a building. This is not the church. This is a building dedicated to the worship of God. God's dwelling place is in Mount Zion. In Judah, God is known. His name is great. And Israel and Salem also is his tabernacle and his dwelling place in Zion. Now David, when he recouped and uh, erected the tabernacle on the southeast hill, in Jerusalem, which was a hill 
that was originally owned by the Jesuits. And David overtook this city, and this city became the city of David. And David, when he put this tabernacle on the southeast hill, it was known as Mount Zion. Mount Zion, it's a spiritual city. They got the Hubbles and the Bubbles and all of that stuff you can see uh, in the space. They're looking for the city of God, but it's a spiritual city. Yes. It's a city that is invisible. Yes. It, it's non-material. Uh, right. So they'll never find Mount Zion. Right, right, right. Uh, the word Zion, it means fortified, uh, fortress. And a fortress is a place that can't be broken into. It's a place that is unconquerable. It's a place where you must enter in by permission or you must have the keys to the door. Amen, amen. And the keys to the door, David says, I will enter into his gates with thanksgiving. It's a spiritual approach. I will come into his courts with praise. The key to the city is praise and worship. Amen, amen. Zion is a city. It's, 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 it's filled with an innumerable company of angels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the book of Revelation, John was on the island of Patmos. Yes. His bodily presence was on the island of Patmos. But he says, I, 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 I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And immediately, now the Lord's day is, is considered a day of worship. He says, immediately a door was opened up to him in heaven. Today, we in a building, the sanctuary of the Most High God. But the worship service is held yes. in Mount Zion. Yes. And the only way that you can get to Zion is in spirit and in truth. <laughs> I, feel, I, feel, I, feel, I feel the anointing. Hallelujah. And, 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 and now when we come to the sanctuary, because we don't know, we don't know how to do the service of the Lord, many times we come and we call it the church, and we never reach Mount Zion. Mm -hmm. Because we don't understand what our purpose is and how to get to Mount Zion. Amen, amen. This priesthood, he says, well, let me back up. After Jesus was crucified, in the book of Hebrews, where it talks more about the priest, it says, I think it's, uh, I, I know what it says, but I can't tell you exactly where it is. Say, you also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up mm -hmm. spiritual sacrifices holy and acceptable unto God by Jesus Christ. Spirit in truth the fruit of your lips is only thing that you that can get you into Mount Zion because God owns everything else. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness of the world and they that dwell therein. The only thing that you can offer up to God is praise and what you, what you put into the atmosphere. Because he owned everything else. Mm -hmm. 
Amen. So, so now, you also, as the lively stones, a living stone, are built up a spiritual house to offer up the praise team. We got praise team today. Job is to gather together the people in the outer court and take them into the holy of holies. Didn't come for you to be entertained because somebody got a melodic voice. We had church today. Ah, but no, 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 you didn't have church today. You, you got to be the church and operate in the king, in the priest hood in order to get into the presence of the Lord. Yeah. We got this, we got this, we got this yearning down in your spirit. Been had it since you hit the earth. I was old enough to uh, know that you was looking for something. And what you're looking for is God. God designed it so because you're looking for the fulfillment of joy. And it only exists in the presence of the Lord. You can have a whole lot of things to satisfy your personal feeling. But what you are looking for is the fulfillment, the fullness of joy. And it only exists when you get into the presence of the Lord. <laughs> I remember running around, you know, I, I thought I had me a good house camped out on cloud nine, you know. And, uh, man, I had a good time last night. Camped out on cloud nine. Did, did we do it? <laughs> hey, Rick, I said, did, did we do it? Camped out on cloud nine. But the devil had me tricked. I, I, I found out that he was keeping me from getting into Mount Zion. Uh, you can have some fun, but what I was looking for was the fulfillment of joy. Once I got into the presence of the Lord, I was mad. Because I, I, I used to go to church. <laughs> I used to go to church with Aunt Cat. And Kat was, uh, she was a uh, uh, holy roller evangelist. Mm -hmm. I was in Mobile, Alabama growing up. And the floors was wooden. Me and my cousin, we went to church with Aunt Kat. But we went to church with Aunt Kat because they had guitars, mm -hmm. they had drums, mm -hmm. and they was in there, they were dancing. You know, we, we went, we went, we was laughing at them because they was having fun. But little did I know uh, that those kids were speaking in tongues and she would come during the Christmas season and they would have a, a revival. And I used to go to school with some of them. And I was wondering how, how, they, how they did their homework. And they was in the, they was in, they was in the service too. And, and the saying they was dancing and the singing be jumping up with the beat of the drums and the dance. And I was wondering, but I didn't understand that these kids, because when you join this congregation, nobody wasn't going nowhere until they got filled with the Holy Spirit. No matter how long it takes, if you confess with your mouth, and believed in your heart that Jesus was the Son of God and that Jesus was Lord, you were guaranteed to get the Holy Spirit and speak in another tongue. Hallelujah. <laughs> now me and my cousin, when the service was over and all the music and stuff was done because they was entertaining our flesh. Because we love the music, but we didn't understand that these, these people was, was, was going up into Mount Zion into the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, ah, but when I, when I got filled with the Holy Spirit, 
I found out that I was tricked. And I had been in the presence of God. And when I spoke into another tongue, I understood that the fulfillment of joy, what was going on, all that flashed back into my spirit. Hallelujah. And then I began to understand some things. I began to understand why when, 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 when Solomon erected the tabernacle and it said that God, now he wanted a people that would worship him with one mind and one mouth and uh, at the dedication of the temple, it was said that when the trumpeters and singers were as one, to make one sound to be heard and thanking and praising the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music and praised the Lord, saying, for he is good, for his mercy endured forever. Then the house was filled with the cloud, even the house of the Lord. So the priests could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord had filled the house of God. You know why the priests couldn't stand to minister? Because in his presence, there is fullness of joy. Who needs to, to minister when you're in the fullness of joy, uh -huh. hallelujah. Now that was that was an anointed cherub in heaven. Uh -huh. yeah. He was a walking instrument. Uh -huh. He had tablets and pipe all in him. Yeah. He was the worship yeah. leader. Yeah. Uh -huh. But because he thought uh -huh. in his heart. His beauty got the best of him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He thought he could exalt his throne Amen. above the stars of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He thought he could be he he could. like the most high. Yeah, yeah. But God had another plan. God wanted a people that would worship him with one mind and one mouth. Hallelujah. And it came even the past. When the trumpeters and singers were as one to make that one sound to be heard and thanking and praising the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and praise the Lord, then was the house filled with the house of God. Hallelujah. Now God had a perfect plan. He wanted a kingdom of priests. So God sent his only son who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person when he by himself had purged our sin sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. And I read in the account mm -hmm. of the acts of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And I heard mm -hmm. Jesus say, mm -hmm. but you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me in both in Jerusalem and all that you did. And in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. And when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them golden tongues like as a fire that sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Hallelujah. Yes. 
and in the accounts of revelations. I heard John say, and they sung a new song, yeah, yeah. saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and had redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation and had made us unto our God kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth. Hallelujah. And I read and I read and I heard John say that there was war in heaven and Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought in his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. Yeah. Hallelujah. And in the accounts of Luke, I heard Jesus say, and I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. And when the lightning streaks Across the sky, it's only seen for milliseconds. The great dragon was cast out. The anointed Sharab became an unemployed worshiper. He's already been sentenced, and the praises of the saints have served up his execution. Hallelujah. And I read, I read the accounts of St. John, and I heard... Jesus say, uh, but the hour cometh, and now is, uh, when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeks such as to worship him. For God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. This is a kingdom of priests. That is seeking him that seek his face, O Jacob Selah. And this kingdom of priests that seek God's face, they know in order to ascend into the presence of the Lord that you must enter his gates with thanksgiving and come into his courts with praise. I be thankful unto him and bless his name for his foundation is in the holy mountains. And the Lord loved the gates of Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob. Glorious things are spoken of thee, O city of God. In of Zion it shall be said that this and that man was born in her. The highest himself shall establish her. So the heathen shall fear the name of the Lord. And all the kings of the earth his glory. For when the Lord shall build up Zion, he shall appear in his glory. He will regard the prayer of the destitute and not despise their prayer. This shall be written for the generations to come. And the people which shall be created shall praise the Lord. For he had looked down from the heights of his sanctuary. From heaven did the Lord behold the earth to hear the groaning of the prisoner and to loose those that are appointed unto death to declare the name of the Lord in Zion and his praise in Jerusalem when the people are gathered together and the kingdoms to serve the Lord. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised in the city of our God and in the mountain of his holiness, beautiful for situation. The joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion on the sides of the north, the city of the great king. God is known in the palaces for refuge. Hallelujah. So sing unto the Lord, for he had done excellent things. Sing, sing, sing unto the Lord a new song. In his praise in the congregation of the saints. Let Israel rejoice in him that had made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises 
unto him with the timbrel in the heart. For the Lord take a pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their bed. Let the high praises, let the high praises of God be in their mouth. In a two-edged sword in their hand. To execute vengeance upon the people and punishment upon the people. For upon his enemies, let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their bed. Let God be glorified in this place. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For a kingdom of priests is a priest that served the Lord. For you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who had, who, the praises of him who had brought you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Hallelujah. The priest's job is to minister unto the Lord. And when visitors come into the sanctuary, his foundation is in the holy mountain. The Lord loveth the gates of Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob. Glorious things are spoken of thee. It is said, this and that man is born in her. When we come to the worship service and take the people into the presence of the Lord, they are born in Mount Zion. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This kingdom of priests was to minister 24-7. This priesthood that we are it's the minister, they was, the Levites were recruited to do the service of the Lord. And the service of the Lord is 24-7. The Layman's Bible Encyclopedia, it describes worship as dedicating the worthiness of an individual to receive special honor in accordance with that work. It is regarded as bestowing adoration upon a deity, whether it be unto the gods of nations or the one true and living God who reveals himself to his children when the worship is dedicated to him in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who had called you out of darkness and put you into his marvelous life. Amen. You know, we we say, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. But no, 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 no. Jesus is the light of mine. He's the light of the world. He's the one I want to shine. Hallelujah. I, I understand that good old time religion. But, but, but the Bible says in all your getting, get understanding. You are the light of the world. A city. And set upon a hill. Hallelujah. Uh, it, it's all right sometimes to, to, to sing them songs. But you know what? Because the truth is what sets you free. When I get into a congregation and they sing in this little light of mine, Jesus is the light of mine. I'm going to let him shine. Jesus is the light of mine. I'm gonna let him shine. Jesus is the light of mine. 
I'm gonna let him shine, let him shine, let him shine, let him shine everywhere I go. I'm gonna let him shine everywhere I go. I'm gonna let him shine everywhere I go. I'm gonna let him shine, let him shine, let him shine. Let him shine. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you are here today and you don't know Jesus and the free pardons of your sin, you can satisfy that yearning down in your spirit today if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is the Son of God, and that Jesus, most of all, He's Lord. Yes. Amen. Amen. You can guarantee yourself a place as a kingdom priest. Yes. Amen. 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 Thank you.